everyone. Uh, welcome Hi. to Dice Jailers. I am Jordan. I'm Bjorn. And once again with us, we have... Dana. We didn't go over that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but welcome to the show. Uh, this week, we are talking about classes and subclasses that are not uh, currently in 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons that we wish were. Yeah. Uh, and just other cool mechanics that uh, we wish were in 5th edition. Uh, but before we get onto any of that, Bjorn, how you been, buddy? I am so excited right now because we are two days away from our next one shot. Oops, all bards. Yeah, yeah, it is going to be amazing. I have spoken to all the players about their characters. The next best thing is the players don't know about each other's characters. So... Yeah. They're just gonna be thrust in this situation where they have to work together. They're all bards. Uh, because they're bards, there will probably be thrusting from some of them. Who knows? There you go. Um, <laughs> I can guarantee folks who are like, oh, I've seen every type of bard possible. No, no, you no. really have not. Uh, some of these- I, I made sure with mine. No, you have not seen this bard. Um, and, and honestly, I don't know if yours is the most creative. That That actually still wouldn't surprise me. Uh, there there are a couple that I was just not ready for. Um, my one my bard is really just one weird thing. Yeah. So <laughs> so we all four bards are very unique. Uh, they're very weird. And they're going to have to work together in this uh, crazy little environment. It's going to run a little longer than some of our one shots, but I think it's going to be worth it for people to, to tune into this. So yeah. getting ready for that, I, I just I could not be more more damn excited for for this one so that's it's it's gonna be so much fun that, that's been a lot of the focus of my week i mean that and um critical roles finale is tonight i'm yeah. i'm excited uh i will uh probably go through half a bottle of tequila drinking margaritas because it's 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 margarita thursday why not and it's gonna be great and i'll be up till two in the morning and then i gotta get up at six for work and i don't care because whatever that's some goddamn commitment right there i mean you know i run on very little sleep as it is anyways like when you work full time and you're a performer and you dm you know campaigns and other one shots and games you just kind of learn not to sleep that's you know that's that's fair that's why i cut back on so many of the games that i was running so and that i could fucking sleep our Seattle Kraken has the number two pick in the draft. Yeah, Looking we do. That. Supplemental draft later this month. I still don't, don't understand hockey, but I'm here for it. <laughs> I don't know a lot about hockey. Uh, I enjoy watching it. Uh, I know yeah. very little, but I know I'm about to become a huge hockey fan. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to going to a couple games next season and oh, yeah. just learning about this whole thing because, uh, yeah. I'm all, yeah, I'm all about, about hockey. You know, right? <laughs> but I get to be on the ground floor of, of a team. This is the second team in my lifetime that this has happened with, the other mm -hmm. being the Seattle Storm. Um, mm -hmm. Your champion, yeah, Seattle yeah. Storm, since they are defending right now. Multi-season champions, baby. True. That reminds me, I need, to get, I need to get a Sue Bird jersey. I still don't have one. Oh, yeah. Anyhow, I'm going to kick it over yourself before. for this month. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to kick it over to you before this entire hour just becomes a Sue Bird love fest, because it will. <laughs> 100%. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, I I spent a good amount of this week, uh, you know, making sure that all our, making sure that our very few uh, graphics for, uh, for the one shot are done. I also, yeah. uh, because there was a humble bundle with some other stuff that I wanted, I now have a bunch of new loops to try and make a new break. I'm just going to try and make a break time track uh, nice. through tomorrow. Uh, and if I don't make it, I'll figure something else out. Uh, but yeah, uh, and I did I recorded a bunch of auditions this week, so hopefully I'll have something that pays me. Again, uh, talk in the chat, and please <laughs> subscribe and all those things so we can get the internet's money for this. Yeah, because uh, real punchy today. The internet doesn't need uh, it. We do. I don't know what what it is about today, but I'm real I'm real punchy. Uh, <laughs> But uh, no, I'm good. Like I, I spent a good amount of uh, of yesterday hanging out with a a good buddy of mine that uh, will be on the stream with us for the one shot. Yes. Uh, got to see his lovable dog Rosie, and that, that little corgi makes my day every time. 
shedding like a monster right now. Just so I mean, much it, hair. It's uh, been warm this week. It's, it's been always hot. It's been a little warm for my tastes. Uh, once once it gets into the eighty anything, uh, I, I'm done. I'm done. See, I I, I, I can handle I, music from the eighties, not temperature in the eighties. <laughs> See, me, I love this heat uh, because I can be comfortable in less clothes. Ah, yeah. See, I can only strip down so far, and the thing is, my ancestors do not come from a place where it gets warm. That is so... very true. My blood's not born, suited for this. Your, your genetics were born in an ice cube. Man, it can, it can keep getting cold and cold, and I can, I can live with it. I'll be okay. But it gets hot and hot, and I get unhappy. Yeah, like Cole Porter said, it's too darn hot. Cole Porter said a lot of things, and I agree That's with most of them. Very true. Uh, gotta love Cole Porter, though. Cole Porter has such an extensive catalog of music. So many things... That there, are, there are just a million and a half like song styles and choices that, although there are so many, there are a few that may have been left out. Sure, the ones you don't get to experience as often. Yeah, and and like you know, it could be something as ridiculous as like I wish Cole Porter did like a reggaeton track, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't. I really don't. <laughs> uh, that would be terrible. I think. Uh, <laughs> But there, there's always that when you have a long list of a whole bunch of things, uh, you always think, but what are some other things that could be on that list if they existed? That's the segue. That's that's it. That's it. That's the segue. We're doing I realized it just like that about that. a minute ago. Yep. Uh, I'm definitely going to watch back through the playback and just see where Dana recognized what was happening. <laughs> it was good. I, I, even without my glasses, I could see her blue screen just completely just... <laughs> Dana.exe has stopped working. That's fair. Yeah. What, what's what's great is the same thing happened last time uh, Dana was with us, and yet uh, <laughs> you decided to come back. Like, you have no one to blame but yourself. <laughs> right now. Honest, honest, eh, I, I honestly don't know. Um, I need a break from summary project stuff. I need, I need a break, so. Because someone's doing way too much important schoolwork. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I want it to be done. I want it to be done for me. Well, Give instead me my of important degree. school work, we'll talk about unimportant but exciting wish It's list. important. I yes. I disagree. <laughs> it is important for shit. I was just going to say, too, maybe we could, maybe a Cole Porter subclass of Bard. Is there a school I mean, of jazz? College of jazz? There isn't. But we, the thing but is, we did like, talk about like jazz. Yeah. We you talked know, about you, which you uh, say that, and and I'll 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 still entertain the idea, even though you quoted Jerry Seinfeld, which I can't forgive. Um, however, I could say it more like him. Uh, please you don't. Like I, yes. I mean, well, okay. The show is over. Uh, no one, no one has ever thought um, Jerry is funny. No one thinks that. It's because true. he's not, and his he's show not. was, I'm and just... it's it just trips into some level in the brains of a lot of people. And it's, if you've ever seen They Live, it's kind of like that. It's yeah. just you need you, people need to see through the glasses to understand just how messed up uh, it is. But that weirdly segues into a uh, a subclass that I wish uh, existed. Go. Uh, so it's. It's shown up uh, occasionally, and uh, it shows up in Pathfinder. Uh, mm -hmm. This kind of mechanic also uh, occasionally shows up in uh, in Ex uh, the game Exalted, which mm -hmm. you should definitely play. It's like playing a ridiculous over-the-top anime. Super fun. Uh, but it's and they they have that they have this with the Wizard School of Illusion, mm -hmm. but it's not quite uh, the Illusion School for me isn't quite as illusiony as it could be if I that agree. makes sense yes and that's it, it's th this idea comes from the melding of the illusion school as well as uh what used to be a subset of of magic the ch just the pure charm school right and it's it's basically bringing those two together and all of your spells would be uh you know all your spells would be probably either wisdom or charisma saves and it's all about 
it's all about the big pure illusions like they have like in older editions they have uh it's like an an illusion fireball mm-hmm. uh or a shadow fireball where it's only uh the only people that are affected by it are the people who don't uh who don't pass the the save and so sure, they believe so strongly that they were hit by a fireball is that an intelligence save you think could be Probably. Well, it's it's like the illusory dragon spell, which yes. I think is a great spell. And I, I love the idea that they take psychic damage from whatever they're hit by. Exactly. It's an intelligent save. You know, they still take uh, half on a success for a lot of them. But I'm with you. I don't think the illusion school goes as far as it could. And I, mm-hmm. just to piggyback on that, it actually goes into the first one I wanted to talk about. Oh. And it's in the same area you're in where I, I don't believe maybe outside of divination, because I think that one does a great job. I don't think most of the wizard schools um, stack up to what they should be. And the biggest one that, that irks me because I think for wizards and for clerics, it falls short. And that's necromancy slash death domain cleric. I don't think the game has given us a way to truly have a powerful necromancer now and that and that it that is because in fifth edition they were trying so hard to get away from the builds that people had where they were just stacking a million and a half companions right and then what could a dm do about it which and, i can't but what i would love to see is a a necromancer where make their abilities to make these minions rise very short term but how awesome would it be if you drop a mon- one of your allies, like the fighter, drops a monster in the battle. Then when it gets to the Necromancer's turn, they use their action, expend the whatever spell slot, and that monster rises back up to go into battle as a whatever mm-hmm. kind of zombie or, or anything. Like That's yeah. the kind of Necromancer I want to see where anything dead it can then use as a weapon. So... In, in huge battles, their power would increase the more enemies you kill, but when there aren't corpses to use as weapons, they would be a little weaker. Because mm-hmm. I, I agree, you, you can't have hundreds of minions following you at all times because that's impossible to balance from a mechanic mm-hmm. standpoint. But I just think necromancy falls so short in both the Death Domain Cleric and in the Necromancy Wizard and frankly, the one that I think gets the closest of being cool, and I like how it approaches this balance of death, is actually the Grave Cleric. Yep. Where it it doesn't give you, uh, like, necromantic powers, but it uses features that are very unique. Um, thinking yeah. Sentinel at Death's Door, or the other ability, I, I, I forget the name of it, where you can give vulnerability to the next attack that hits. Mm, like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The level of weakening uh, a foe that that does, bringing yeah. it now closer to death. I like that, and I I want a necromancer. Well, it, it also like the the grave cleric, unlike, uh, unlike your uh, unlike your necromancy wizard, the grave cleric feels special. Yes, as opposed to the other necromancy, uh, the other attempts at necromancy where they're just like. Well, it's dark negative damage. Ooh. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's kind of my, my, my first big wish list is wanting like a true uh, necromancer. And part of that is not even as a player, but it's as a DM sort of wanting that toolkit. Because yeah. you, sure, I, I, I can homebrew one. I, I absolutely can. But let's face it, almost anything we homebrew, if we do it really well, we started from a very strong template and mm-hmm. did a lot of editing. I, I know very few DMs. It's who, like we talked about in the episode last week. Yep. Uh, when homebrewing, where you always want to start from something that already exists and exactly. just tweak it a little bit uh, because yeah. it's way easier to keep it balanced that way. I, I know very few DMs who absolutely created something completely from scratch. It doesn't resemble anything else at all. And it's this amazing. Uh, homebrew. I mean, we, we've talked about you know the, the finale of season two of Critical Role is tonight. You can look at a lot of the amazing homebrew that's in like Explorer's Guide to Wildbound mm-hmm. that that Mercer created. But you can also see where a lot of those ideas came from. Like, yeah. yeah. 
and 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 that's not a knock. I mean, that's that's no, legit it's praise. Smart. I think yeah, it's smart. you go. Oh, this item is really cool. What if I created a thing where it did this? Like, look at the advantage disadvantage system in Five E, which I love. This yeah. whole moat of possibility that the Luxon Beacon can give you. Mm-hmm. It's essentially a freebie advantage that you can give yourself, but it's a unique way of doing it. And that's that's what I want. I want my template to go, here's how yeah. you can build a really cool Necromancer. So, uh, yeah. Which, talking about the advantage-disadvantage system, uh, that comes to another favorite, like, it's not so much a class uh, that exists in other games, but it's a big mechanic that exists in other games that, some, that like, rogue classes often uh, take advantage of. Uh And this is the idea of a lucky bastard. So it's without using just the luck feat. Basically, but it's it's an entire class that's just built on it's like the the best one the best version of it that I've seen is the uh it's I can't remember the name of it now, but in the in the Star Wars pen and paper, Mm -hmm. uh the smuggler that was it yes then they give they the easiest example of their smuggler is han solo yep uh because like in that pen and paper his class is smuggler uh like and and there are so many different abilities that are in that as a class where that character just gets lucky and i and i I would love to see a rogue subclass that really builds off of that uh, being able to give and take advantage or have extra abilities that happen when you do have advantage or even uh, ways to like, you know, like I have I have advantage now and I'll have disadvantage on the next one. Something like a, a mechanic like that, just to make that the class of the lucky bastard. So you can really just really have that rogue that's just why the fuck is he good at everything? I don't know, man. And, and I like that idea too, because you know the the easiest way to get advantage when attacking is is be a barbarian. They get reckless attack. The mm-hmm. downside is everyone has advantage against them. But I'm with you. I, I the idea of of the charming, cunning thief who mm-hmm. just has great luck that goes their way. Um, I would almost love to see that as its own class and have it be like a charisma based kind of halfway between a bard and a rogue. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I, I would, I would love to see, cause we oh, have lots of. So you mean three, based. five swashbuckler class. Yes. Yes. I, I, get, <laughs> I, I love the rogue swashbuckler. Don't get me wrong. I, I really do like that build. When we talked about rogues, yep. it's my favorite rogue build, but I would like to see a charisma martial class we have (laughs) multiple charisma caster classes i think we have one too many and i'll get to that in a minute but i would love to see a charisma based martial class where they're just so suave so debonair and like you said so lucky that everything Mm -hmm. they do just things kind of fall their way because they're natural charisma yeah i feel that like i like I, I haven't, I didn't get a chance in, when I was playing three five with people to actually play the swashbuckler, but based like, uh, like the gunslinger in fifth edition has grit points, yeah. And swashbucklers would have panache points, and it was basically the same kind of pool as the grit pool yes. is for fifth edition yes. gunslingers. It's just for extra little fucking things, <laughs> and, and that's beautiful and. You know, like I just said, I think there's one too many charisma-based caster classes. Now, I disagree. I am not looking to completely redo one of them. Although, if <laughs> if they allowed me to, um, we would completely redo one class. But I'd like to add one. I would like a constitution-based spellcaster. That's right. <laughs> because of the notion of using your magic, taking so much out of you physically that it's based on your con score. Because mm-hmm. we know multiple things. Sometimes magic can just be physically draining. And I think the sorcerer was the perfect opportunity for this. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's an opportunity missed. I think it should have been a constitution-based thing. But because con isn't a dump stat, which we all know. Con, con is a dump stat sometimes. N- never is. 
Yes, Never a dump stack. absolutely. It is a dump stack. Sometimes. If you but, don't plan on getting hit, you don't but, need that high of a con. If you don't uh, plan on getting hit, but when do plans in anything in D and D ever go? Thank you. I mean, you. my archer thank was you. great at not getting hit. That's good for you. <laughs> my, I didn't. <laughs> good for when you. I play an archer, I don't need con because. I'm not going to get hit. Con, con is almost always the second or third stat for me. No, no matter what. It depends on I the build. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. It depends on the build, whether it's the second well, or the third. I almost always play a caster. Precisely. No. It's a dump stat sometimes. But to balance having a con based spellcaster, because I, I do think you can make it a little munchkin y if you're going, mm -hmm. oh, Con is your primary stat, so almost anything else can be dumped. I would actually bring back the D4 hit die for that class. Because oh, 100%. You're going to have to pump your constitution anyways. That's going to give you extra hit points per level. And I think to balance it, I would go D4 hit die because we only have one class with a D12. Why not add one that uses a D4? Heck, it wasn't that long ago that wizards were using D4s. Yeah, I'm still I'm still surprised that Wizard isn't staying at D4. Like I'm I'm happy it's a D6. As a wizard, as someone playing a wizard who's been down to single digit hit points multiple times, I'm happy it's a D6. Yeah. Eh, dodge. With what armor class? Yeah, you have no, you you can't think? wear armor. With your decks. If what you decks? were Sorry. What decks do you here. plan on starting with? At level one, what decks do you think you're going to have? Well, you're level one. Anything can kill you at level one in just about every class. And not a barbarian. Which is why it's I mean, the best. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. There is. Uh -huh. Anyway. <laughs> this is My wish list is more barbarian. <laughs> But yeah, I, I would love to see a constitution-based caster where you actually have some abilities that maybe a once-per-long-rest ability to enhance your spells, and then if you use it beyond that, you would take levels of exhaustion to mm -hmm. amplify your spells, similar to some of the sorcerer's metamagic. Uh, right. Again, I, I think the sorcerer was a great chance to go into a constitution-based spellcaster, which I, I would love to see. And kind of what I draw on for this is, is the movie Willow, when Willow's trying to really learn the magic to turn Finn Rizel back into a human, and we see mm -hmm. it's physically hurting him to try and cast the spells. Uh, we right. also see this in, in The Witcher. We see the sorceresses, the way it physically exerts them to cast mm -hmm. these spells. And, and that's constitution-based casting right there, if I've ever seen it. Oh, very yes. Uh, now there was there's a subclass that popped into my mind while you were talking about that, but before that, purple uh, dragon knight. Uh, I actually that was one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, is <laughs> a a class that should exist that should be named the purple dragon knight instead of yeah. that garbage subclass. Uh, but before that, just because we talked about it before, Dana. You oh. had a really, really cool, yeah, a uh, really, really cool idea that you were telling me before the show I started. I literally like was googling stuff when Jordan was telling me what you all are talking about today, and when you were talking about um, the necromancer, it reminded me of this. Somebody, uh, somebody in the internet brought up uh, a subclass, a school of wizardry, um, like the school of secrets. Like you are practicing a lot of dark magic but necromancy is not a part of it so see, i like that i kind of like that and like i see like this this could also be like a subclass as somebody it, this would be perfect for somebody who is super bougie somebody who's super high up high ranking it like it's kind of like your um what's the fucking guy from game of thrones which one Bald dude, secrets master. Whispers. Oh, uh, Varus. That guy. Yeah. yeah. That. That's like that's what the name kind of reminds me of. Um. Well, because that that kind of makes me think of like uh, a wizard subclass, uh, emulating some of the ideas of the uh, the shadow sorcerer. Mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. 
Because that would be fucking dope as shit. I would also, like, you could make it, 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 it might be a little too easy to play, like, neutral to evil, like, in those ranges a little bit, but I'm, I think that I don't mind it. super interesting. Super, I, super interesting. The, um, I do kind of miss the days, uh, the days where there weren't so, where all the classes weren't kind of tuned to you playing as a good aligned character, like it is in 5th edition now, where it's like, Pretty much everybody's a hero, regardless of how you play it, because, well, here we are. It's like, well, no, but, set up for an evil campaign. I know it's hard to DM, but it's fun, damn it. But, but I would also say it'd be nice to see um, builds that lent itself towards an evil character that was more interesting. Because, let's face mm -hmm. it, the, the, the thing that detracts from most evil campaigns is it really just comes down to going from town to town, murdering everyone in sight. And I think that just gets very one note. I, yeah. if, if the only thing that makes your group evil is like, we kill everyone. I'm like, let's just do it as a it's one shot. Just, it's then. just like, it's just like chaotic evil is like pretty much the only thing that is really. Yeah. Like but, the only alignment that's really played evil and like something like this, like somebody who just practiced onomancy a lot could lend itself to like a lawful or neutral evil alignment which could be very very oh, yeah. interesting well i i've I, always said that i i would love to play a lawful evil paladin in mm. a campaign with mm. other good characters under the mindset of they would know that this this character kind of does things in a very harsh way but it could be there's an interrogation where they're trying to get the info they want they don't want to resort to torture and then my evil character would basically be like okay when you don't get it your way, we'll try mine. And mm -hmm. I think that could create an interesting balance. So, so I love what you're talking about with like the dark magics mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the one that mm -hmm. um, we're totally remiss for not opening with, but let's face it, Jordan, we've talked about it enough times. May as well bring it up now is friggin' blood magic. Yep. All the like, blood magic. Gimme, gimme, gimme. And that, and that to me falls right in with those dark magics. I, I love the idea of a character that, either borders on or straight up is in that evil territory where the party members need them. Yeah. I love that. I love that character when you have a campaign where characters are stuck together and they have to work together because there's no other choice. Mm -hmm. And so now what do you do? Do you decide, well, this blood magic's wrong. I can't allow it. Or do you live? Yeah. And, and well, like that's, and bringing in blood magic brings uh, brings in more of a need for another charisma based or a constitution based caster. Yeah, exactly. And so that shit would take a lot out mm -hmm. of you. Like it could be like something that if you want if you want to expend so much of your energy control like into like higher level spells of like literally controlling somebody's body movements. Blood it's, bending. It's going yeah. to exert your own energy it's going to re like require you to put so much energy have a time last there better blood like bending. it's i mean part like that's kind of why i like the idea of like in the blood hunter class of like blood maledicts but i wish like when watching molly like pre-death molly um in critical role that we'd seen more of that like th anytime that popped up I was like i want to see more of that well and, and yeah, looking ahead in levels with the with the blood hunter there really isn't more of that it's no, just kind of I, more often and, uh, and I, 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 I like the blood hunter i think it's a really interesting mm -hmm. class I, I still think it's overly complicated like like we talked about it's it's yep. clearly a class designed by a DD &D nerd which oh, 100%. nothing wrong with being a DD &D nerd yep. but it's it's very but much like you just don't show it that obviously <laughs> i know god like, What's it's, with that? Uh, same with the brown <laughs> it's like, there's nothing wrong with it but i like if someone was brand new to D and &D went "Ooh, the blood hunter sounds cool i'd be like you're new don't no, no, don't, don't touch that one no, it's no, no, no. that's 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 too that, much that's advanced like let's yeah here, no, i'm here. not going in there i'm not going near blood hunter for a yeah. while mm. you get that Speaking. you get that new person you hand them a nice fighter and say let's go f things up and that is no shade to the fighter because i think it's one of the most fun classes the to play rogue i had a fun time playing a rogue as a first character anyway yeah, yeah. but uh 
speaking of of blood hunter and things that i would change about blood hunter um we have we have this slightly in a race in D&D &D. we have it slightly in a blood hunter subclass but what i need what i abraca fucking need is a lycanthrope Ooh. class because like they How have like a throat race we're getting a damn peer yeah we're not like, getting it. we have a damn peer because van rickens is out baby yep. we have, we have a, a damn peer campaign, yeah. our straw campaign right now but like to yeah and like uh the, and like the were ravens exist in curse of strahd yep and what i would what i want are just the stats for what fucking happens if one of my players gets bit yeah mm -hmm. you know because like, there really isn't a whole lot written down and so as a dm you just kind of have to make things up also if there's a ch possibility for your character to control the transformation yes and that, you I get, will agree that is one thing yeah. that I, I i enjoyed from previous editions that i would like to see again give me and more you mechanics get the tiniest for splash of it. you get the tiniest splash of it in order of the lichen in yeah. the hunter subclasses but you still really don't get it and like you have the shifter uh that has like you know that can take on that one beastly trait but you don't really have like a full transform also i selfishly need this because if my evil campaign does get back together and we start playing i could use the stats for a wear shark <laughs> oh no Bear shark is he in your evil campaign sure is <laughs> Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, Sorry just a, a proper a proper like a proper lycanthrope like class or even class abilities that take on lycanthrope stuff, much like Order of the Lycan with Bloodhunter in I'd other classes. Like so, so, so to have that for you know all 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 the various things. So whether you have like the the lycanthropy turning you into a werewolf. Or a rave, raven, or having or, lichen shark, do 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 do. <laughs> yep. That. Yeah. Oh that, no. Yeah. That. Yep. That's that. You're welcome. Uh, so I'm gonna just charge away from that because I never want to hear that again. Uh, do 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 do. <laughs> and charge directly into a class that has existed in Pathfinder, three five. I think it was even in two, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's is this in, a class that does some charging of its own? Oh, it 100% does a lot of charging on its own. It's With a noble it's, steed? Yes, with a noble steed. This is the goddamn Cavalier. Ooh. We have mentioned yes. it many times on this stream already. And the class that should just be what the Purple Dragon Knight sounds like it should be. But Jordan, what does a Cavalier do? Tell us more. Well, a cavalier is all about mounted combat. And mounted. also... <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Cheers. <laughs> it's mounted a charisma-based oh, fighter. Care. No. Uh, but actually, uh, it had a lot of abilities in it that were charisma-based because a good, yep. a good portion of the cavalier is not just being, being on top of your war horse or your dire, or your dire wolf or... In Pathfinder, your Triceratops. It's a thing. Yep. It's a thing. Uh, it is. Anyway. Like, in Pathfinder, it's very, very easy to have a Triceratops mount uh, if you're following rules by the book. Um, it's ridiculous. Uh, do it. Please do it, because it's funny, and it will make the people at your table go, wait, fucking what? Yeah, well, um, dinosaurs are always the right answer. Also, yes. Um, but yeah, the Cavalier, it wasn't just riding on whatever your your companion is and charging in a battle with a big lance it was also i too believe in riding a companion with a big lance yeah you do uh also the innuendo uh but what innuendo? you get in <laughs> your end to be on horseback with a a pole a hard long Don't. pole just let just should have just let it happen hanging out with jake gyllenhaal mm. uh so but the other half of the Cavalier class is having your Cavalier's banner. So when you actually have your banner up and you're showing your colors to your enemies 
to your allies, it also gives them advantage on intimidation checks. Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, as well as, uh, as well as like the paladins, uh, the paladins area boost to saves. Yes. Like the cavalier was just that. Like I'm here, and I'm here to help everyone. And honestly, I I think the the cavalier subclass of the fighter misses the mark on what that subclass really used to be and and, mm -hmm. and should be. And, and, and I'm with you, the the purple dragon knight or uh, banneret when it's not in that area of the Sword Coast. Mm -hmm. Those two, you combine some of those and make it its own class. I I understand to a point the idea of not wanting to glut with too many classes but uh, i i miss we talked about this before i miss prestige classes me too i, I do I really do and, and and you talking about that one it, it reminds me of my favorite one from uh the three five era and that was the gladiator yes just the whole just you you you, you do combat but you also it, it's a level of performance the whole thing is you have to continually be showy and flashy in combat and you mm -hmm. got bonuses based off of that, and you would and get you actually have to create a signature move for your yeah. character, and, and you would get like yeah. different bonuses, um, and you yeah. would get your own unique combat abilities. And the thing was, by doing these, <laughs> yeah, do, doing <laughs> these cool abilities in combat could also inspire your allies to be more confident in combat via watching you. Like, oh, inspiration! Somebody else who can give inspiration other than a bard. Yep, yep, yep. That'd be dope as shit, wouldn't it? Though, wouldn't it? So yeah, I I remember way back in the three five campaign I was playing in, we got so close to being able to prestige class because I was going to take my yeah. fighter into gladiator. Yeah, so I saw were. what it could do, and it just looked so fun. Um, and then on that, I know I know you're big on like running kingmaker games. You well, I just I just really like to play the uh the uh the pc kingmaker right uh, because but... it's playing dnd &D without other people and it's really nice <laughs> but yeah, i mean I said it you love the idea of giving your players their own fortress and yes. their own location to operate out of and so, like almost their own little miniature city that if they don't want to adventure and they just want to play pencil and paper sim city they can um there was a, there was a warlord class that really got a lot of those bonuses mm -hmm. where you could be that general on the back lines and yep. command a lot of things. Which again, um, I, I would love to see some of that come back. Uh, I don't know how well it would translate to some of the combat mechanics in Fifth Edition, but I'd love to see it tried because well, that was could, really you could cool. Piggyback on. Uh... A bunch of uh, a number of the battle master maneuvers you that could. the battle master maneuvers that give your ally uh give one of your allies an an action or a move or something like that and have those and have those as the main thing of that care of that care that general's class of being like all right i use my action to command you to command my ally to have another action something like something in the in the frame of that which i which would love that just could still get very some, silly some people really like playing support classes but you want to play unique support classes and classes that support in clever and interesting ways and that mm -hmm. could be really fun that would be yeah that would be super fun <laughs> just being able give to give the barbarian another turn see what happens <laughs> right <laughs> let the wizard cast another spell no nope. oh, don't give that much nope, power that, nope <laughs> Nope, nope. I see. I see where that's broken. Uh, thank you, thank you, wizards, for not including that. Uh, yep. I see. I see where that goes down. No, that's very a good quickly. idea. I'll bring that up to my DM nope, when I go that, back in a couple weeks. Nope, yep. that's a terrible no, idea. Don't. I like that nope. idea. More don't spell. Like doing that. That's a mistake. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a big Someone mistake. Someone playing a wizard. More spells. Nope. That. Nope. That's. I that's could always bad. use more spells. That's that's very broken. That's, I only nope. have like one six level slot right now. It's not for now. For now, and like. Yeah, I need I need more. Nope, that nope, more. that's not nope. Always that, I see why it's bad. I see why it's bad. And all uh, of a sudden, no one man, Jordan cetera, rethought his life. Yep. Uh. Yep. Mm -hmm. That. Yep. Uh. Everything has come crashing down on me, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Yes. But yeah, like I, 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 I miss some of the less active uh, subclasses and mm-hmm. and class where it's, you're you're not just going into combat and smashing shit. You could actually be really clever and creative with with stuff you were doing. And I, I actually want to go back to something Dana said as a joke, where as I've been kind of uh, thinking on it, mm-hmm. um, you mentioned like, oh, is there a College of Jazz bard? So jazz is, yeah. as we know, a style of music that there's a lot of improvisation in it. They say yeah. it's about the notes you don't play as opposed to the ones you do play. So what if you found a way <laughs> to make a bard and then take some of the ideas from the wild magic sorcerer and you just put that together? Okay. So, I'm, thinking you know, I'm thinking what you're putting okay down. College of that. improvisation. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm into uh, it. Yeah. College of improvisation. So you could have, oh. like, say, as, as, as your third level ability, mm-hmm. when you hit third level and you take this college, you could choose one tool proficiency. At the end of a long rest, you can change what tool you are proficient in. So you can't change it midday, but day to day, you could change your tool proficiency. Mm-hmm. I would also say you could have one moving skill proficiency on that long rest as yeah. well. Ooh. And then the for your bardic yeah. inspiration, make a way of that being sort of random who gets it. Yeah. Uh, see, what I was what what came to mind with me when it, when you said uh, College of Improv- Improvisation yeah. is, now imagine, if you will, grabbing the sorcerer's metamagic Okay. And giving it to the bard. Sure. Sure. Because College of Improvisation just for me is just like, hey, let's fuck with the magic a little bit. And you know what I would do? I would have yeah. that uh cost uses of your bardic inspiration. Exactly. Like it costs it costs a bardic inspiration use to do it, and all of a sudden you have this whole new way of doing things. I think it works well because you never get as many bardic inspirations as you do sorcery points. So I think it would stay yeah. very, very balanced. And, and could it would be also be really, fun. Yeah. And honestly, I would I would allow for, um, go, okay, College of Inspiration, make it your 14th level feature. When you use your uh, improvisational inspiration, call it, where you do the meta magic, just pulling I named for it out of my head mm-hmm. your 14th level make it for that you could change the damage type of a spell oh absolutely so absolutely. you're like you're imp- improvising so maybe maybe you got this yeah so bad and make it it doesn't matter it's the spell so type bad. you just have say two templates and i'm using the uh the dragonborn the new uh dragonborn ones of the unearthed arcana mm-hmm. have your element ones so you've got like your, I call them, you know, the Tiamat heads. You've got your fire, coal, lightning, poison, acid. Those can all be interchanged. And then you have your gem ones, your force, your psychic, your thunder, uh, those ones. Mm-hmm. They can all be interchanged. So you'd have two tables. It'd be a bit to keep, keep track of. So yeah. you can't, for example, Not turn a fireball blender. into a ball of force because I think that'd be a little on the broken side. That's terrifying. But imagine... Yeah, but imagine that you could take something where it does Absolutely psychic not. damage and change that to force damage. I yeah. I would love that. What's the idea appreciate. that you 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 improvise for your music and your performance, and so you're able to change damage types on stuff. And I think you yeah. would have the grounds Suggestion for is a, a truly <laughs> offensive bard. Which, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm truly all for that. Bard. Also, I'm here for that. Also, just. Addressing the chat. Addressing the no. <laughs> there will there cannot be an ability called yes and uh yes, because I will hate it. Uh that'll be the, yeah, then, that'll be the sixth level ability. But yeah, see, the, Jordan, I hear you saying no a lot. That's this right. Is the yeah. number one rule of improvisation. I teach yeah. improv, madam. Which is exactly why This is not improv. Here. But it is with this bard, College of Improvisation. God yes damn and it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. But I no, love with it, that, need it. you would definitely uh, need to have free castings of suggestion. Molasses across the lips. Uh, I would say you would get uh, of. Um, I would say more like you would get the friends cantrip for free. 
Uh, no, friends no one that does improv great... has friends. I mean, the thing is, think, think about how friends works. Think about how friends works. They don't like you after they realize you've done it. That is fair. Is this just yep. a, if you've just been casting a long game, friends can't trip on me. At some point it's going to run out. And smoke bomb! <laughs> 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 but, uh, all no, that comes in your kit! Yeah. yeah. I, I would like to see, you know, a, a college like that for, for bards. The idea that you're just self-taught uh, imp improvisational yeah. music or, or performance. I think there's a lot of fun that can be done with that. Oh, uh, the random, random thought from the past, yep. from before we started the episode. Dana, well, you should talk about your druid idea. Oh, there's two, actually. Um, there's two? So, well, I mentioned one to you, and then I saw the other one scroll, when, like, in the same place that I saw the idea for the School of Secrets. Right, 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 right. Um, so somebody was talking about why we don't have a specific plant-based druid subclass we have I like a it. bunch of druid spells but something just crazy. yeah one of my neighbors just dropped down from the fire <laughs> rock on dude um uh, <laughs> derailed <laughs> um but we have like all of these spells we have speak with plants we've got like vines and like what's what's the one Somebody just used it in the last session I was in where you um, bring spikes up from the... Um, spike growth. I think that's a spike yeah, growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spike growth. Oh. Like, we have so many, but why don't we have, like, a circle of... Circle of the tree or a circle of the plant or whatever. Basically, um, you could be poison ivy. Yeah, circle, 100%. Circle of the ivy or something like that. Well, because we... Yeah. Have... yeah. Poison ivy! Yeah, because, like, we have mushroom druid. Why do we not have tree beard? And the other one that I just could be the of... Lorax. <laughs> I speak for the trees, and the trees I'm... say, "Y'all about to get capped." <laughs> nope. The other one that I saw that was brought up is um, an aquatic based druid. Oh yeah. Oh, well, be Aquaman, right? Be Aquaman, be a mer, be merfolk. Um. Yep, because you've got you've got merfolk, you've got tritons, you've got aquan elves, like marrows and all that. Absolutely, yeah, fun, fun shit. Yeah, what, what what have we got? Spells that are already there, control water, shape water. What else? Well, I I think it's a strong idea because I, I could see the first um, like detraction against it to go. Oh, that would only work for very specific campaigns or adventures. But I'll point to the but the thing is I'll point to the oath of the watchers paladin mm -hmm. and go how is how is this useful outside of very specific games? Also, I would like to no see one gets more to talk those. about. No one gets to talk about specific specific classes when the purple fucking dragon knight exists. Yeah, like mm. give me some of those more specific dragon ones. Knight. We hate it so much. I <laughs> fucking terrible. hate it so much. It's, 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 it's so it's bad. Terrible. And it's got it's, the coolest name. It does. And it sucks. Oh. And it's ah. just, <laughs> I, I don't, you know, the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide is actually a wonderful book, despite not being a very big book, because it has so much information and lore about the entire Sword Coast. And well, it's not about how big the book is. I mean, you know, keep telling yourself that. But the thing is, the Sword Coast is fantastic because so many of our adventures that we have pre-written modules for they take place there and it really yep. helps you flesh out a game or a campaign if your players i don't know decide to say we're gonna travel north instead and you're like shit what's north so you at least have that information uh, mm -hmm. the sword coast adventurer's guide if you're playing in the forgotten realms it's your friend sure is uh so but it's a little bit of your foe because it has the purple fucking dragon knight. It really is. It's it's so bad. And it's so bad. Really, you have to wait at least five minutes before bringing up the purple dragon knight. Absolutely knight. not. I will bring up that I hate it every moment. It's Fuck. It's awful. It's... Yeah, it, it's honestly, elemental based it, roots, yeah. yeah. It is the only subclass I will ban from my table. That if yep. somebody says, I'm going to so play it, I'm going to go, no. It's terrible. And I won't have you complain about it because you're going to complain about it. Yeah. I won't allow it. On that, I don't know if you 
either of you want to get into this, but is there a class, or maybe a subclass, that either of you would want to get rid of? Besides the Purple Dragon Knight. If you could get rid of one subclass, because... You yeah, know, there is there is or one. You could change mm -hmm. it. No, yeah. there's there's one I'd love to make a small change to, and one I'd get rid of. The one okay. I would make a small change to yeah. is the Berserker Barbarian, and I think yep. the chain is very easy. Is I would change the Frenzied Rage that you get one per short rest. I would yep. take away the whole exhaustion thing because I don't think it's that imbalanced. If you use more than one per short rest. Then you get exhaustion. Then you start building up exhaustion yeah. points. Yeah, that but I give sense. you one. I give you one for free on short rests because it's only one extra attack, and honestly, it's not that broken if you limit it some. And then the one I would get rid of is simply the order domain cleric because it's a cop. Yep. Uh. Yep. Mm -hmm. And 100%. we don't like cops. Yep. I fuck them. I get rid of. Don't like cops here. Uh. I would get rid of. No cops but, yeah. I would. I would get rid of. Uh. Where was the? I'm trying to remember. It was it was a uh, it was a cleric it was a, a cleric subclass that we talked about that were like why is this cleric trying to be a wizard? Arcana domain. Yes, I would get rid of that because it yeah, sucks what's... until your seventeenth level. Yep, I would get rid of that one. That I I don't think I know too much about that and yeah like if no one gonna, plays it because it's not good. If we're gonna delve into Arcana, yeah, just play a wizard or a sorcerer or warlock. Like yeah. it. It, it has potential, and I love the idea of it. And once you hit 17th level, it's like, oh, you can take these wizard spells, and the people will be like, oh, but you could be a cleric with wish. And I go, you have to get to 17th level. That's a long fucking way to go. Yeah. Yeah. For, and, the, and for any benefits. I will say this. Um, again, we've mentioned the show a couple times. I will actually be very thankful to Campaign 2 of Critical Role for this. They're ending at level 15. Maybe mm -hmm. 16 cursor goes, oh, you level up again before the end. They played for three years and are stopping yeah. at level 15, 16, meaning they never hit 17, meaning no level nine spells, no capstone abilities for a lot of these classes. So mm -hmm. then if someone wants to say, oh, but, but the Arcana Cleric, when you hit that 17th level, I could go campaign two of critical role, played for three years, never hit level 17. Mm -hmm. do not play a subclass because of what you get at high levels there is Never. no guarantee you're getting there and most of your playing is at low levels like yep. that's what you need to be looking at you have at. to survive the lower level mm. to get those yeah yeah Speaking of like surviving the lower levels uh it's a subclass that it's a mechanic that exists in other games uh and not necessarily just tabletop games either. I'm talking like other different video games, uh, especially it happens a lot in MMOs where there is a mentor class Ooh, or there yes, are please. mentor abilities. Uh, we're talking about other, like other classes that give buffs uh, in Ooh. other ways than just being a bard. And so those mentor abilities that can get into the big, uh, again, into the advantage mechanic yep. of playing that kind of that general support General support. Uh, general support. Uh, Major advantage. Yeah, there we go. Major advantage. Uh, but with with the idea of like, all right, my action is to give is to give you advantage on your next attack because I fucking taught you how to do this. So it doesn't just have to be like a general inspiration. It could it could be like a specific like skill. Like this is what I taught you here. I'm gonna give mm -hmm. you. It's kind of like maybe just a free guidance yes yeah. free guidance it would it would Without be it would be something like that thought, maybe or being able or being able to like like if that's if this is going to be more of a spellcaster mentor like the mentor class could give someone else like one of their spell casts kind of like making a scroll but right. without needing to have the material components of actually like making the scroll you know, without the all the fucking financial burden that comes with being a fucking wizard well, i think yeah. go, going off of that like uh mentor sort of idea of a build i would kind of like to see that maybe combined with the oath of redemption paladin and made into a monk because yeah i've i've never liked the oath of redemption paladin simply because when you hit your capstone ability the whole idea is being 
nonviolent and never attacking or anything. And mm -hmm. part of what makes Paladin special is the Divine Smite. Yep. So now I'm never going to smite. But you give me that same build as a monk who I get bonuses because I don't attack. The idea of maybe being able to not so much attack an enemy, but you hit them in a certain way that you trigger a pressure point that now they have vulnerability on the next attack against them. Or, right. you know, a, a stunning strike that doesn't last for a full round, but lasts through a character's turn. So if whoever goes after you attacks next, they get advantage. Like mm -hmm. having that mentor mechanic who's also using like pressure points and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like something like that as a monk. And so you're never doing damage, but you're always just effing with the enemy. Yeah, and that's already uh, and something like that is already in uh, is already in fifth edition with the the masterminds mm -hmm. uh, added cunning action yep. of basically pointing out a flaw, where you can take you can use the rogue cunning action, mm -hmm. and instead of disengaging or dashing or hiding, you can use it to give someone advantage. You can give some uh, whoever attacks this thing next advantage on that hit, and so like the mechanics already there for yes. that like hey i'm setting you up and combining that with a monk that is beautiful i, I, I would love to see it <laughs> shush you it was a palm strike i don't give a damn <laughs> i mean yeah i like the the closest thing we've kind of we've kind of seen it in critical role especially like in the earlier episodes with um darren and Bo. Mm. Mm -hmm. yep. like darren wasn't necessarily in any fight except for that one brawl that one bar brawl mm -hmm. but um sort of that mentor uh very much that mentor thing like i'm gonna show you like every so often i'm gonna show you points you can hit on a person's and, body and maybe because if you have that mentor ability the idea of if it was a monk being able to use so many key points mm -hmm. to then mm -hmm. let an ally use a monk ability on their turn so right. okay, you spend so many key points now. Next they time, I'm going to give you a strap or something. Yeah, or mm -hmm. they can use flurry of blows, or maybe they can use stunning flurry strike. Like, oh God, being able to gift stunning, stunning strikes. Strike. Stunning strike. Oh. Stunning strike is stupid. The DM's to... bane. <laughs> Doesn't need to exist. I disagree. I think stunning strike's amazing. See, yeah. is because in in our campaign. We this demolished <laughs> one of his big beasties that we were supposed to run from because yep, of a yep. good stunning strike. Yeah. Yep. It was supposed to be a very difficult combat, and then... It was not. Stunning strike. <laughs> stunning <laughs> God's I like damn... Why I hate stunning that? strike. Why is that? Why is this... Why does because it seem like stunning strike? It's because usually with bigger, like, bigger and level monsters and things and enemies... Not gonna lie, it's if it's one person, it's probably a spellcaster. And you know what spellcasters aren't great at? Con saves. Which no. is why con is not a dump stat. Because you want to have that bonus. I roll. All comes Maybe back around. just don't get hit. Comes back around. Yeah, you know what? It's it's really nigh impossible to not get hit by a high level monk. Because they have a stupid amount of movement and can run up walls and can do all sorts of other dope monk shit. That is very true. It's yeah. yeah. Don't monk shit. Don't monk yep. shit. But hey, uh, you know what? I'm able to be okay with some of my monsters being destroyed by that stunning strike because the big bad Nickermancer who's been tormenting them for almost three years, oops, still alive. Yeah. Hate it. Yeah. I didn't even do a stunning strike to you. I know. Still got disintegrated. Yeah, I oh, sure did. I, I sure did. did. No. I'm fine. That's hard to come back yeah. from, though. Yeah, well, I mean, they, it was hard, but I'm fine now. Yep, yeah, they they succeeded the resurrection. I feel better. Oh, but yeah, damn. Whatever. Look at the time. I know. Is this really? All, all these things said about a wish list. Um, <laughs> all all that aside, five E is legitimately my favorite version of D and D that exists. Like it's it's simplified and it moves faster. And okay, th there are times where I miss some of those multiple different skill checks, but yeah. I will never miss the the nonsense of oh, confirm your crit. No, I rolled a twenty. It's a crit. I did do that in my current campaign, and I'm it's, like, it's the stupid. DM said that, and I was like, excuse me. It's stupid. See, you rolled a twenty. I got a crit. It's a crit. See, I'll give it to me. 
I'll I'll trade confirming crits for having all of the options of Pathfinder. Uh, I just I love I love the creative control, uh, and I will give I will I will concede on confirming crits to have I that will, kind of creative control again. I will never I will, I will never I concede can't. on that. One. I just and I love I, I love me I love me my skill points. Oh, I love it. The the other trade off I will take. I miss things having a touch AC. I do yep. miss that because something gigantic should be fairly easy to touch. But I will trade not having that for not having this flat footed crap of the first round trying to figure out who's going when. And now you yeah. have a different AC for that. It's just, let me just have an armor class because it keeps the yeah. game moving. So it does. But that doesn't mean we're not allowed to have wish lists. So, yeah. uh, blood magic. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. We should save. We should totally save this video for later and see how many different like homebrew options we can come up with. I mean, we could definitely. Because whatever all we did, everything we discuss here has just got me like, I need, I need. That would be fun. I mean, it's not hard yep. to make. We'll get, we'll get Ethan in on another episode when he has time. He's never got time. Uh, but we'll get Ethan in on another episode and talk about how he homebrews things uh, for his his show that I'm about to plug right now, Anti Heroes Anonymous, that just debuted their ninth episode of yeah. their second campaign. Uh, so there's time to get in on that early because it's real good. And he's got and he always uses a bunch of homebrews in his game. So yeah. look up Anti Heroes Anonymous because it's our friend and we love that show because it's our friend and it's also very 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 good. It and is and we might be here at five their o'clock artist. on Saturday. Uh oh yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot your own wind yeah. I mean I mean Ethan's gonna be in it, so I Exactly. I, yeah. That was that was I the just, segue. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh yeah. Uh so thank you for joining us this week. Thank you all. Thank you, Dana, for joining us this week. Yeah. Uh, remember to please do all of the internet things to give us the internet money uh, oh, because I want should, Twitch Daddy's money. We should go we on do. Instagram more. I should go on Instagram more, but yeah. I don't. I should go we on Twitter should. more, but here we are. Yep. Twitter. Eh. Eh. Instagram. Eh. Yeah. yeah. But uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, all of us, all of you. Uh, thank you so much for watching uh, on YouTube later if that's what you're doing. Uh, the episode will be up at noon on Saturday because I won't forget to put it up. Um, and also on Saturday is our one shot. Here. Yeah. Oops, Let's all bards. Time. Yep. Oops, We're going to be bards. Great. We're going to be bards, baby. Greatest, We're going to be bards. Name. Uh, it's it's going to be a great, great fun time. Uh, so that's all we have for this week because we, we're going to watch Critical Role. Yeah. We, yep. We've got to get the snacks ready. We got do. a whole charcuterie board that's getting oh, yeah. that we're gonna we have to plans. prepare. Oh I yeah, went, I went overboard. Yeah. We got snack plans, baby. Uh, so with that, got a pitcher of margaritas about to happen. Yes. We will. We will see you on Saturday, and if not on Saturday, next week, Thursday, for another episode of Dice Jailers. Bjorn, what do we always say? Do something nice for yourself this weekend. Cheers.